Today, I'm gonna to take you through a quick tutorial on how to bring in Excel file sheets and to write them out. So, uh, sadly, we can't get rid of Excel in our everyday lives for most of us, and some of our data sources will be in Excel. So we wanna be able to play with that within R without a struggle. So I have here, hopefully you can see it, a Excel file with simple header and a couple of uh, example values for the rows. And then if you look down here, I have one called named sheet, and then I have one called sheet one, which was the default. Similar thing here, I have uh, features across the header. Well, I have a header full of features. And over here, you'll see that it's similar, but not quite the same. And I'll show you that here in R. So let's go back to R. There's two packages you wanna download, and you wanna avoid, you do want to avoid anything that has to do with Java. Now you can use it, but it could run into problems because you know where's your Java path? What version of Java do you have? Et cetera, et cetera. You really, if you can avoid it simply, then I would avoid it, but you can go the Java route. And a Java route would be using something like XLSX, that package, but it relies on our Java. And then that means you have to go install Java if you don't have Java and make sure it's the right version of Java, x86 versus you know 64-bit versus 32-bit, et cetera, et cetera. I don't believe that it's the best approach because you typically run into problems that are hard to dissect because everyone's going to have a different machine, different Java problems. So let's just avoid it altogether by using read XL. So the read XL package will let us do this without Java. And I've already got it installed, but go ahead and click on the install button for you. Give that a few seconds and then let's go from there. So we'll start with reading an Excel file and that file that I have, hopefully you've downloaded it and clicked the button. Um, I created this file, but you can use any file you want. And notice again, there's names down here. So the difference between like a CSV file, which we're usually bringing in, a comma separated value, we have an Excel file with named sheets or defaulted named sheets. So let's start with sheet one, our basic version here. Let's go back to R. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna uh, just go ahead and load that library that we just downloaded, X, um, read Excel. So control enter on that. And now you will notice that I have in my actual project directory, if I go to files, if I scroll down here, so I'm in my, this is my cradle to grave R because I'm very bad at organizing projects. <laughs> but anyways, if I go down here, I have something called book, book1.xlsx. You can see it right here, book1.xlsx. So it's there in my actual project directory. So I don't have to worry about paths so much. But if we wanted to, we can use the here package, don't forget, and do it that way. But let's just go ahead and load this using read Excel. We'll tie it to a data frame. So my data sheet one is equal to, and we're just gonna simply do, we're gonna simply do read underscore Excel, and then we'll put that book one. Notice I typed in B-O-O. -O. If I hit tab twice, it'll automatically find the proper file I'm looking for if there's no other file named B-O-O -O something. Uh, it's good that it works within quotes, within files. It, the autocomplete is getting better and better every day. So I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, control enter on that without any, I didn't have any other parameters, just the file name, and you can see that I have my data and I have eight observations of four variables. No, you can't. Now you can. <laughs> Over here to the right, I have my data. Click on that. And now if I zoom in, it's our feature one, feature two, feature three, feature four with our eight observations, right? Let's go back to Excel. So we have definitely used sheet one. So our default, if you look at it, going back over to here, our default when we didn't actually specify is the first sheet, basically. That's all I'm trying to say. In fact, we can verify that if we wanna just, let's switch the sheet one to over here. So now my sheet one is actually the second uh, tab in Excel. I'm gonna save my Excel. Let's go back to R. These are just some subtle things that you should think about when you're doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and rerun this code on row three, reran it. I'm gonna reopen it up and you should have it on your right hand side right behind me. Now you can see that it's letter, number, blanks, anything goes. So it's different, it's not features, right? So the fact is it definitely follows the default will be the very first tab. Now, how do we get around that? I'm gonna leave it the way it is. So let's go back to R. We can actually specify the sheet name that we want. So we can do comma 
and then just do uh, sheet equals and just put that in in quotes sheet one I believe it was called let's double check real quick sheet one just like that now it should go back to the features right so I'm gonna rerun it I reran it uh, click on the data that's right behind me in this little screen here and you see at the very top it's feature one feature two feature three feature four okay so that's how that works. Now, let's say you didn't want the header there or that or there were no headers. In fact, let's go to let's go back to my Excel. Let's just go ahead and delete row 1. I'm going to completely delete it. I'm going to do um, gone. So there is no header. So the header would be be meaningless. Go back to R. Actually, let me save that. Control S. So under named sheet, which is the first one, that's what I have. Let's uh, let's do the default again. And Command Enter. Hopefully that worked. Okay, so let me put me on the bottom instead of the top. So now I have seven observations of four variables, but let's take a look here. We have a header right here that says A1 dot 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 three and A. That doesn't make any sense. There was no header, but it thinks there is. So let's just go ahead and fix that real quick by saying header equals false. Simple as that. So header. H E A D. I thought it was header equals false. Let's double check that. Seven observations for variables. Nope. Column names. Column names. I'm getting mixed up here. Call names equals false. There we go. That's better. So you see what I have here? Column names. Don't forget the not the five. My shortcut keys are really killing me here. All right. So we have. Eight observations of four variables now. There we go, clicky click. Now it actually, it named them, but it didn't name them with our first row of observations. Now that naming convention is terrible, so we can fix that in another way. But in other words, but if the column names are false, I mean, they're gone, right? So we don't have a header. Let's figure out how to write something now. We've got that one figured out. Let's just write a Excel file. Do you understand though that what I'm talking about? If I go to this data, Row one is A1 and A and A. If I go over here, uh, row one is A1 blank and A. So keep that in mind. Now this and A is an actual character in A. This and A is a true and A. So all these little subtle things you have to think about as you're starting to analyze this data. But you can see that the NAs in row or column three are truly NAs. You can definitely tell that they're text in column four. It actually tries to figure out that on its own and you can override that. One way to check this out is to do, um, let's do my data, my data sheets, sheet one, and let's just do a structure on the str and run that. And you can see down here now, I have a tibble. Oh, I didn't even show you guys tibble yet. So you have a tibble, and you can see that um, the very first, I'll put my mouse over it, hopefully. So it's a character, number, logic, which is NA, logical, and then a character. So it did describe that as, as a character. And basically, let me explain to you what a tibble is real quick, because you haven't really seen them yet. A table is nothing more than a data frame that's on steroids a little bit. So it's a little bit smarter data frame. When you get into the tidy world and the tidy verse and tidy and deplier, they like to use tibbles and tibbles are in fact most likely going to be beneficial and eventually will only use tibbles because it's just a smarter way to enter data into your system. Okay? But tibble and a data frame are virtually the same for every function you're going to ever apply to them, so you'll never know the difference on the back end. So if you can apply a function to a data frame, you can apply that function to a tibble. You really don't need to know the difference. Um, so that's that's what I wanted to show you. And that comes from the fact that Read Excel actually returns a tibble instead of a data frame. But we could have just done as dot data frame up here. I know this turned into a little bit more complex than you wanted to. But you can see, I still have the same thing here. But now if I do structure, you're gonna see it a little bit different. Let me do it one more time. The structure of now this is, you can see down here, it's slightly different. It is, oop, there we go. It is character number larger character, but it's a data dot frame, not a table, okay? Yeah, a little confusing, but not so bad. Next step. 
let's write something and this is very simple too so go to packages up here above my head install and then let's do write excel and you install that one click on install you should be good to go okay once you do that we'll actually just load library write excel so i hope you get something a little bit more out of this than just this quick read and write like some of the um, things that are going on in the background i don't need this structure anymore so let's just write something like the iris data set and we'll just do i think we just do write xlsx i wish it was write excel kind of like the read excel we had so write xlsx and that function we're just going to bring in the data that we want so data equals in other words that x right there so data equals, um, we'll, we'll just do the iris data set and we'll call it the iris data dot xlsx. Simple as that. So you see, I've got it right up here. Once I click enter, that will put it in my default project directory, right? So let me run that. Now, if I go to down here, you can see on my files, I should have a iris, if I can find it iris-data.xlsx right here. In fact, I could find it here, and there it is. Let's see if it opens up. There it is. So we have our iris data with our features across the header here. So it worked just fine. And that's all there is to it, and I know this went a little bit longer than expected, but Please subscribe and like this video and do all of those things that will make me happier, grow this channel, and hope to see you in the next one.